Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A scam alert tonight from Troy police after a scammer told a woman she won some big money from Publishers Clearinghouse. Come to find out that cost her more than half yeah. a million dollars. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. Police say the scheme went on for months. It involved cashier's checks and pricey jewelry. Jacqueline Francis explains what happened. When you think of Publishers Clearinghouse, you think of someone knocking on your door with a giant check. But in this case, it was used as a cover to scam an elderly woman out of her life savings. A 73 year old woman in Troy fell victim to a vicious scam. They sent her in what appeared to be an official Publishers Clearinghouse document claiming that she won $3.5 million, a car, and $7,000 a week for life, uh, which like the old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And it was. The person contacting her claimed to be an attorney with the Federal Trade Commission, which Publishers Clearinghouse is known to use in transferring prize money. But in this case, the attorney was an imposter and a thief. So she went back and forth, uh, sent multiple cashier's checks, uh, deposited money into Bitcoin ATMs, which was then transferred into the suspect's account and also bought a couple of pieces of high-end jewelry and sent them uh, to the suspect. She did so under the assumption she was securing her funds and paying for the vehicle's storage fees. But in reality, she was being swindled. The imposter stealing a whopping $660,000 from the victim over the course of several months. Within the last couple of weeks, she told her friend about it and her friend kind of said, you know, this doesn't sound right. This seems like a scam. Uh, maybe you should go talk to the police department. She did, and an investigation was opened. And now police are hoping others can learn from it. You should never have to send money to somebody if they're claiming to be giving you money in the long run. It's unlikely the scammer will be caught and the money recovered, but an investigation is underway. Reporting in Troy, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Okay, Jacqueline, no bond for the man charged with stabbing and killing a woman over the weekend in Macomb County. 21-year-old Demarion Goler is accused of stabbing 31-year-old Talik Mercina. It happened Sunday near the door of the couple's Sterling Heights apartment. His girlfriend and her unborn child both died. He faces several charges, including second-degree murder, and will be back in court next week. A no-show for the man accused of selling fentanyl to a Birmingham teenager who later overdosed. Aaron Miranda did not show up for his court hearing yesterday. He's been out on bond. Of course, now there's a warrant out for his arrest. Birmingham police believe Miranda sold Jack McCarthy fentanyl less than an hour before McCarthy died. McCarthy's family said the teen had anxiety and thought he was buying Xanax. Miranda faces a number of felonies, including delivery of a controlled substance causing death and could face life in prison. We learned tonight the search and recovery effort in Baltimore is now uh, declared a salvage operation. Investigators say the remains of two missing workers have been recovered. As NBC's Jay Gray shows us, the probe continues into why a massive cargo ship slammed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Late today, a somber discovery in the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Divers recovered two, two victims of this tragedy. Divers working in incredibly dangerous and difficult conditions. Twisted metal, severed cables, jagged boulders of rock and concrete from the collapse in the pitch black depths of the Patapsco River. Authorities believe four more victims still missing may be buried under that rubble. Divers are no longer able, able to safely navigate or operate around that. We have exhausted all search efforts in the areas around this this wreckage. As investigators expand their search to understand how and why the fully loaded container ship slammed into the center support column of the bridge. We now know the NTSB has recovered the ship's voyage data recorder and is beginning interviews with the ship's crew members and witnesses. You know, it's a very tragic event. It's multimodal. There is a, a, a lot of information we need to collect. Part of what the NTSB says will be a long, detailed investigation, followed by the difficult process of clearing away the debris. In Baltimore, Jay Gray, Local 4. The NTSB says 56 of the containers on the ship carried hazardous materials. Officials say federal, state, and local authorities will be in charge of addressing those issues. 
Federal judge panel green lights Michigan's redrawn House district maps. Last December, three judge panel ordered seven state House districts have their boundaries redrawn after it was determined that race influenced how they were drawn back in 2021. The panel had said that while nearly 80 percent of Detroit residents are black, the black voting age population in the Detroit area districts mostly ranges from 35 to 45 percent. Well, the new map will create three majority black districts whereas before there were none. The map will be in place for the November election, in which the balance of power in the state legislature, of course, will be at stake. Former senator and candidate for vice president Joe Lieberman has died. Family members say Lieberman passed away today in New York after suffering complications from a fall. The former Connecticut senator served in the Senate for more than two decades. He was a Democratic vice presidential nominee in 2000, running alongside Al Gore. Eight years later, he nearly became Republican John McCain's running mate. Joe Lieberman was 82 years of age. Tonight, it's official. Martha Reeves has received her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Took a village uh, to make this happen. Reeves had to crowdfund the money needed to get that star. Mara McDonald live at the Motown Museum tonight because, Mara, not only do you have to pass muster of the committee that passes out the stars, you have to pay for it. You sure do, Devin, and it's not cheap. We're talking $75,000. So the road from Hitsville, USA, to that Hollywood Walk of Fame was not a cheap one, and Martha Reeves had to crowdfund more than 50000 to make it happen. But she did. Our honor to welcome the newest Hollywood Walk of Famer, Martha Reeves. She's already in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the Vandellas, and tonight Martha Reeves has her own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Life is real good to me. All of my friends are here, everybody that's taking me toward Amy, Jean, all of y'all. Reeves was accompanied by some very famous faces and voices, yeah. including Stevie Wonder, Smokey Robinson. Martha, it's time you were here. I'm, I wouldn't have missed this for the world because Martha is uh, one of our profound acts. Barry Gordy and Motown's crazy. former A&R director oh. Mickey Stevenson, who discovered her singing at the 20 grand. She's already on Rolling Stone's list of 200 greatest singers of all time, but has been active not only in music, but politics. She was elected to the Detroit City Council in 05. And while Martha and the Vandellas had many hits, we all know the words to her signature. Back here live, just know I'm singing it in my head. I won't, you know, force you all to deal with my singing voice, but know that after I was done with Dancing in the Streets, I wanted to launch into Heat Wave. I will say, as someone who covered Martha Reeves when she was at the Detroit City Council, it was always kind of cool to say, Councilwoman Reeves, do you have a moment for an interview? We're live at Hitsville, USA, at the Motown Museum. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. <laughs> so great. Well, and just a, a great night for her, but great night for Detroit and Motown Absolutely. and that great legacy as always. Yeah, yeah. super stuff, Mara. Thank you, Mara. All, All right. right, we've got a chilly evening again. We do, and as we take a live look over downtown Detroit, uh, but this is actually, I guess, kind of normal. We've been all over the place, and so we'd like to get some more sunshine in here, though, Kim. We, we will get some sunshine tomorrow, but we all have to just kind of get used to what is normal for this time of year, and this is it. 31 in Detroit, it's a little cooler than normal in Howell in the upper 20s. 31 in Pontiac and 30 right now in Adrian. Well, just as the sun set, we finally started to get a little sunshine. And now those clouds have moved up into the thumb. So it's still cloudy in Port Huron, but it is now cleared out in parts of Macomb County. And those temps are dropping. So where it cleared out first on the west side, temps are a little bit lower. In fact, Ann Arbor has just dropped down to 26. It's 28 in Howell, low 30s in Pontiac and 33 in Mount Clemens. It's colder than it was last night by about 15 to 17 degrees as that cold front came through. That's what brought us those brief showers and a couple thunderstorms last night. Tomorrow morning, you will wake up to some sunshine, 31 degrees. That sun will help get us into the upper 40s, but it's still going to be a fairly cooler than normal day tomorrow. And then we go back to normal for the next seven days. There is some rain for part of the weekend, and I'll tell you about that coming up.